Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed to Michael Boris. As the red category three, at least, hurricane threatens to come crashing ashore in Democrat land, one place that is so deep blue is promising to hold out against the Republican swamping. That's Maryland, where the governor's race there is between solid political conservative Dan Cox, a current Maryland state legislator, versus wildly liberal Marxist Wes Moore. And as far as fundamental rights and belief in God and the need for morality in the culture, Moore is definitely less. In short, Moore is a stone cold liar. But then again, pointing out that somebody's embrace of Marxism and being a liar, I mean, that's kind of redundant, so our apologies there. He's a cheat, a liar, and a straight up commie. For example, media reports recently revealed he hasn't paid his water bill, totaling $21,000. $21,000? Yeah, he has a mansion. Like all good Marxists, he loves the idea of the global reset. He spent four years as CEO of the Robin Hood Foundation, euphemistically referred to as the Robin the Hood Foundation because of its devastating effect on minority communities. Cox and Moore couldn't be more different, representing a massively sharp contrast in worldviews. And interestingly, the results of a local Baltimore media poll following their head-to-head -head debate showed that among voters who see the difference, overwhelming support goes to Cox. Fox 45 in Baltimore ran a poll of those watching the debate and asked them who would they support for governor that had the most experience to fight the crime problem in Baltimore City. 75% said Dan Cox, 25% said Westmore. But let's go back to that Robin the Hood Foundation. It allows hedge fund managers to rake in millions in tax breaks that should go to communities on the lower end of the socioeconomic ladder. When it comes to transparency, you can kiss that goodbye as far as the Robin the Hood Foundation goes. According to various reports, the process of following the document trail, well, it's rather Byzantine when it comes to revealing that every dollar contributed produces a whopping $44 in tax avoidance. But here's a new twist. Cox has the endorsement of President Trump, and that has brought down the house on his head by the GOP establishment there in Maryland. To show just how dirty politics can be, Republican governor and leaders of the World Economic Forum, remember these guys, which has a big dog in this fight, actually introduced deep pocket GOP donors, not to Dan Cox, the GOP candidate, but to Wes Moore. If that doesn't prove how terrified they are of the insurgent move against globalism, nothing does. But here's the gist. If Dan Cox pulls off this political earthquake upset, it would be perhaps the biggest shock of the entire evening. Maryland is very deep blue, despite electing some Republican governors in the past here and there. Those governors, like Larry Hogan, are little else than Democrats wearing a red tie. Recent internal polling from the Cox campaign shows two-thirds of registered Democratic and unaffiliated voters in Maryland actually favor Cox over Moore. If election night turns out even close to that, Moore would go down in flames and Dan Cox would be sworn in as the next governor of deep blue Maryland. If there was an environment in which that could happen, these 2022 midterms would be that environment. Traditional polling outfits as well as media polling in Maryland have been massively left-leaning for decades, no shock there. But a question arises here. Why should Maryland be what is shaping up to be the sole exception to what looks like a national denuding of the Democratic Party across the board at all levels of government, county, city, state, federal, everything? Those left-leaning Terrapin polls have more out ahead by as much as 30 points. Recent party registration numbers in Maryland do show Dems way ahead at 55 to 32. That said, that leaves 13% undecided. And the undecided vote almost always breaks toward the anti-establishment challenger. 
presuming almost all Republicans stick with Dan Cox first, and he garners 10% of the 13% of the undecideds, well, he's suddenly within striking distance. At that point, all he would need to do is just peel away roughly 10 points from those Democrats. None of this is an easy mountain to climb, but if there was a year, again, that a conservative Republican could plant his standard atop Mount Maryland, this would be the year. We're going to be keeping a very close eye on this most interesting Maryland gubernatorial race, as well as the entire election. Church Militant coverage will begin with a preview on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, live during our regular evening news slot there. And as the political team here dives into the details and gives you a preview of what's actually going to be going on on Election Day. And then, of course, drum roll please, our live election night coverage on Tuesday, starting at 6 p.m. live Eastern Time, where the whole team here brings you the absolute latest Faithful Catholics, as well as true political conservatives, should be tuning in to us, not the Marxist media who will lie and distort and delay the results because they just can't bother to spit them out. They're terrified to say, oh, another seat goes Republican. Church Militant, you'll remember, was the first, first media outlet in the country to call the 2016 race for Donald Trump. No one has more integrity when it comes to political coverage or any other coverage than Church Militant. So please don't miss a minute of our coverage. It all begins Monday, goes through until Tuesday, until we have the exact how just sweeping was this hurricane of red voters. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.